the real masters of minimalism are the full-time RVers who go from a house to being in a camper like this. So how they did that is what this video is all about. Check it out. All right, so during the summer, my wife and I, uh, with our dog, lived at a nine foot pop-up for 30 days. And one of the biggest mistakes we did was to bring too much stuff. Now, minimalism, as you know, is very popular, but the practice of minimalism, like with Matt Davila, is often just a practice of, you know, paring down within a house. But the real masters, the full-time RVers, they've gone, many of them, um, who end up retiring and, and downsizing completely into a smaller camper, have it down in terms of minimalism. Because they've gone from like, let's say 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, whatever uh, size house down to a very small camper. And although it's not as small as this A-liner that I'm in right now, it's still pretty small. So I've gone and I curated together some different ideas from full-time RVers who have done this uh, multiple times. Because you might not watch the end because like, how many people really watch the end of the video? I'm gonna leave you with one of the best ones first. And that is, it's a process. Meaning, you're not just gonna get your stuff and pare it down to um, the size of living in a camper, and then boom, you're done. It's a process. Some of the full-time RVers actually go and, and rent space and put all the stuff they really can't get rid of just yet and then they come back to it and get rid of more and get rid of more and get rid of more. It's really uh, a process that's designed to adapt to your lifestyle over time. Because think about it, even in sticks and bricks, as the full-time reviewers like to call it, you're still gonna have adaptive needs. You have a room that your kids grow up in and then they move out. So you adapt along the way. And the thing of it is, um, this uh, adaptation is even more so in your full-time RV. Without further ado, let's check out this process in action. There were tons of different ideas, but there was a common thread throughout. And that is, you want to basically go through and make piles. Your piles can vary because depending on if you're getting rid of clothes or if you're getting rid of tools, you're really going to have different processes or keepsakes, for example. Now I'm going to go through what this process is. And instead of using piles, we're using boxes. <laughs> Here's the basic idea. The, there are four of the boxes. Keep, donate, sell, trash. And then the idea is, of course, to fill those boxes. Now there's some modifications to this. For example, instead of donating, there's some memor memorabilia or things that you really don't want to get rid of that are part of the family. And those, instead of donating to Goodwill, you're donating to friends or family. You'll really appreciate them and that you'll be able to revisit on a regular basis. So. There's one modification. Or for example, you're going through your clothes. You're not necessarily gonna have a cell pile. Some people might disagree, but in general, especially during, the, during this time of the vid, people are not gonna wanna buy your clothes. Keep or donate. So there's modifications you can make for this, but the whole idea is to go through this process and to make it so that you have those. Now, now when you're going through these things, what do you do? How do you decide on what to keep and when to get rid of Here's some cool ideas on that. If it didn't get used in 12 months, one person says, just get rid of it. The person said, does it bring you joy? Look at it. Does it really bring you honest, legit joy? If it doesn't, it goes. Another one is, is it easily replaceable? How much space does it take up? And is it really worth the space that it is taking up? One of the best things, of, of course, comes back to the beginning, which says it's a process. So instead of saying, okay, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff and boom, you get rid of it, which you can. It's like a Band-Aid being ripped off. But the thing of it is, you can also gestate with this. So you put it in the various boxes and then you allow some time to pass and help solidify what you put in those boxes and then you'll feel much better about it. The other part of taking time, if you use the items in the in a pile that you decided to trash, well that tells you something. Or such as with clothes, are you able to just live out of the clothes that you just kept or are you pining for the clothes that you put in the donate pile? I was thinking about all this and suddenly this morning I actually heard a voice that said, Can you get rid of your old clothes? So I knew it was time to put it into practice. So here's what I did with the clothes. First, I got and labeled a couple boxes. Uh. Now the hardest thing I think is memorabilia because you've got those things that are really important to you. And yes, you can give them to family members, but you also miss them from time to time. And there's certain things you're not gonna give to your family members. They just don't want them. 
but you still pr have value in them, but you're not going to carry them around. So here's one solution that I thought was really cool. Basically, you go and you take pictures of the different things that you have before you get rid of them, or you scan everything, or taking videos, whatever it might be, but you're going to have a digital backup of your memorabilia so that you can relive it. Now, it won't be the same, obviously, but it's also much easier to go and experience things than it is to try to drag everything with you. Because remember, at the very end of life anyway, you really can't take it with you. Now, the people who are living full-time in their RV, they've gone through this and they've gotten rid of stuff. But even the people that have been on the road for 8, 10 years or longer, they're still going back and revisiting things. They're still getting rid of stuff. They'll still buy stupid stuff by accident and then have to get rid of it. So it's an ongoing process. And I find that personally pretty refreshing because then they don't have to get it right the first time. It's an ongoing process. You end up going through your stuff and saying, do I really need this? Do I really need that? And then just getting rid of stuff. Pretty liberating on a small scale scene that I definitely need, could do better on revisiting stuff and really just paring it down. One of the recent, more recent things I've done is to get rid of clothes and revamp to the clothes I really want to wear. I've in fact got a bunch of clothes I either never wear or I've got a bunch of clothes that I wear, but only because I have it. I got a bunch of t-shirts. I wear them because they're there, but I'm not really excited about wearing them. What if you were excited about all the clothes you had to wear because you pared it down to such a small amount that you wear what you want to wear, what really matters, rather than all these clothes that you wear because you've got them and you don't have to buy anything else. So in paring things down, I think it's exciting because you get down to what you really want rather than all this stuff that, well, at one time you did enjoy, it, but things change all the time. You might as well be wearing something you really enjoy and it really fits your personality right now rather than your personality, let's say, 10, 20 years ago. I think it's really hard to embrace like full-on minimalism. But there are different aspects of it you can take and leverage so that you can do things like go on a 30-day trip without taking too much stuff with you. And knowing what to take and what to n not take is pretty important. It's like going camping. You want to go camping, but you're going to slog everything in your backpack because it's going to be too heavy for you. It's the same sort of thing. Going on these journeys allows you to pare down your life and see it from a different perspective. That's why people who are living full-time in the RV have a little bit of an edge over the rest of us when it comes to minimalism. But I think if you go on short trips, go on short hikes, and you see your life from a different perspective, it becomes easier to pare down what you've got. And when you do so, you'll feel a little bit of weight lifted off of you. I know I have, and I'm looking forward to more. If you like this video, there are a couple more in the description that I know you're going to like to watch as well. Check it out down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching.